Hi, I'm Christopher, and today I'm going to show you some of the different things I've found, basically which options are out there for authentication for if you're building a new web app. So yeah, we'll just jump right into this. Okay, so I made a GitHub repository. The link will be in the description below. Essentially, I just collected a bunch of authentication methods. Uh, and if you want to add your own, um, I'm going to update this contributing file, but for right now, there's nothing. So if you get there before I get to it, then just try to follow the style I've I've established so far. Um, so I have a group of self-hosted options. Uh, this would be GoTrue, GoTrue, Keycloak, and FusionAuth. Um, there aren't any super good guides on getting GoTrue up and running, but I'm working on making that simpler. Uh, I have another GitHub repo that's supposed to, essentially I'm trying to make it an easy to use Docker file for that. Um, and I'm also trying to make a uh, cap rover one click app for that as well. So I'll, I'll make another YouTube video about that when that comes out and a blog post. So if you go to blog.capic.io, you'll see it there too. And if you want, you don't have to go to the website. You can just subscribe to my RSS feed in your feed reader. Um, and I, I have the whole article go to the RSS feed. I hate when people, they have an RSS feed and it doesn't send the whole article as an aside. My, I send the full article. Um, the open source options, go true, go true, and key cloak. FusionAuth is not open source, but you can help self, you can self host it. Um, yeah, so let's see. Keycloak is kind of confusing and I haven't really looked a ton at FusionAuth, um, but it is self-hostable if you want to do that. Then there are third-party ones, Firebase, Amazon Cognito, Okta, Superbase, Userfront, Auth0, and Netlify Identity. I haven't worked with all of these. I have worked specifically with Firebase. I have worked with a little bit with Userfront I haven't actually made something, but I've messed around with it. And I've worked with Netlify Identity. Um, personally, I find that Netlify Identity is the easiest, but it's also, I think, if you're trying to scale up, not necessarily the best option. So I made this pricing chart to figure out which ones are, are best for building a bootstrapped application. Um, Firebase is basically the winner. Like, if, if you want to scale as easily as possible and not have to worry about cost. Firebase, you can have unlimited users at $0 a month. Nobody else really competes like that. Um, Amazon Cognito looks appealing because you can have 50,000 free subscribers, but then it goes up in cost fairly quickly. So to handle your second 50,000 customers, it'll be 275 bucks a month, which is a lot. You can have unlimited from Superbase at $75 a month. So. Amazon Cognito, good for starting out. Scales pretty heavily though. So you might wanna look at another alternative option for that if you anticipate having more than $50,000 or 50,000 users. Um, then there's Superbase, which is the open source alternative to Firebase that uses Postgres instead of a document oriented uh, database. And they start off at 10,000 for users, uh, which is decent. And then to get to 100,000, it's 25 bucks a month. And at 75 bucks a month, you can have unlimited users. Um, I think Superbase, Superbase is good if you want to have the Netlify experience almost. There's not the same Netlify identity widget, but pretty close to the same as a Netlify experience. Um, you can handle uh, JSON web tokens the same as you would on Netlify and whatnot. Uh, you have to have your own serverless functions at this point, um, but in general, Superbase is pretty appealing. And if you're trying to avoid Google vendor lock-in, I would go with Superbase. If you're not worried about having Google lock-in or vendor lock-in with Google, Firebase is pretty good. Um, so these are probably my two favorite, are Firebase and Superbase. Userfront is pretty good. I've actually spoken with the owner of Userfront and they seem like a really cool company. Um, it's free for 10,000 users, which is great for starting out but it scales kind of heavily at 50,000 users. So I, I can't really justify it. Like when Superbase is free to 10,000 and Cognito is free to 50,000 and to go over 50,000, you need just like have your own special use case. I don't know that user front really makes a lot of sense. Um, that being said, kind of like Netlify, it is really easy to integrate to your site. So if you're looking for ease of integration, I would go with Userfront or Netlify Identity, and I'll get to Netlify. Auth0 and Okta are supposed to be kind of, as far as I can tell, like that's what they do is authentication. 
they're also, I guess it makes sense in that sense. Uh, they're also the most expensive. I wouldn't use Auth0 unless you have like some really special use case that Auth0 is the only thing that makes sense. I would consider them last. Um, I'm, I'm talking specifically about if you're building public, like publicly available applications so people can sign up and have an account for like a SaaS application or something. I would not go with Auth0 and I would not go with Okta. Um, also their pricing model is just kind of hard to understand. Finally, there's Netlify Identity, which for scaling isn't great. You can have a thousand users for free. The thing is Netlify is super easy to get going. Like using Netlify Identity, you can throw in the widget, you're up and running in no time. The widget is ugly, but it's authentication, it's simple, it's easy. That's the catch for Netlify Identities. They'll, they'll get you to sign up with it, but then at a thousand users, all of a sudden you have to start paying a hundred bucks a month. To be fair, after that it's unlimited, so you can have the ease of use. And once you hit a thousand dollars or a thousand users, hopefully you're making more than a hundred dollars a month. Um, if you're not, if you don't anticipate to be making more than a hundred dollars a month, and you do anticipate having a thousand users, use something other than Netlify Identity. Probably Supabase. Um, the benefit of Supabase is it's it's the same. Uh, identity server as Netlify Identity. It's just you have more freedom to work with it uh, because it's open source. And I mean, Netlify, it's open source too, but you just can't, you don't have the same ability to uh, modify things. Um, that being said, the one thing also that you should note about Supabase is that it is. Uh, a little bit harder to do some of the super easy things with Netlify Identity. So for instance, Netlify Identity has some options where you can um, essentially trigger a function when a user signs up. And as far as I can tell, that feature is not yet active in Supabase. That being said, I'm, all of the use cases I could think of, there are workarounds that I could still handle any, any function I need to. Um, it just isn't nearly as simple and straightforward as Netlify Identity because not that Supabase is confusing. They have decent documentation. Netlify Identity is really easy to get up and running with. Um, another good thing about Supabase is for free, you can see your secret key. And I think this might be the case with Firebase as well. And I'm guessing probably some of the, these others, but that's something you can't see with Netlify Identity. So if you have a third party API and you want to authenticate users that way, you can't do it unless you're spending the hundred dollars a month with Netlify Identity, and even then, I don't know if if it means that you can see what Netlify uses as the key. I think what it actually means is that you can add your custom key, and Netlify will decode those requests. So I don't even. Someone might have to leave a comment down below if you know what exactly happens at a hundred dollars for Netlify. If you can read your key, or if you can only input a custom key for a third-party authentication service. That being said, I hope this was somewhat useful. Um, personally, if I'm going to develop a project, if I don't care about vendor lock-in, I'm going with Firebase for authentication. If I do worry about vendor lock-in or I wanna have more freedom, uh, then I'll go with Supabase. And if I just quick and dirty want something ease of use, I'm not anticipating this project to scale super big, I'm gonna go with Netlify Identity just for the ease of use. Um, I also have a GitHub repo for like a Netlify Identity Playground. It's not the best, but if you wanna check it out, uh, I'll leave that in the link or in the description down below, you can check that out. Um, yeah, so also in the link below, will, or also in the description below will be my blog if you wanna check that out. Uh, and if you wanna subscribe or follow me at GitHub, I would, I would appreciate that. Um, otherwise I get it, you don't wanna follow a bunch of random people, so uh, don't follow me if you don't want to. That's fine too. Uh, yeah, so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.